to the average person, dirt is just dirt. It's there to dig in, move around, or plant a few seeds in. But those of us who deal with stormwater management know there is a lot more to dirt than that. A single raindrop striking the soil can cause tiny bits of dirt to be displaced. This is what we refer to as erosion, and those displaced soil particles accumulate to form sediment. It's easy to see how a downpour can quickly produce a strong torrent of moving runoff that transports large amounts of soil. The key to preventing erosion is stopping the detachment of soil particles and reducing the speed of runoff. This involves the use of erosion control and sediment control BMPs, or best management practices. When used together, they help ensure nothing but rain enters our storm drains. I'm Christine Sloan, Program Coordinator for the Watershed Protection Program. And I'm Anthony Barry, a Civil Engineer with the County of San Diego. Today we're going to be looking at several erosion control and sediment control BMPs. We're going to discuss the best ones to use and how to pick them for the job. But first, let's get one question out of the way. Tony, what's the difference between sediment and erosion control BMPs? Well, Christine, erosion control BMPs are put in place to stop soil from moving from its original location. Sediment control BMPs are there to trap soil that's already moved from its original location. So why is it important that we use sediment control and erosion control BMPs together? Well, erosion control BMPs are your first line of protection against sediment, but they're not perfect and they fail. So it's always good to have a sediment control BMP downstream to ensure that you capture all the runoff in the sediment. Here in this location, we're using erosion control mats or fiber mats. This type of BMP goes by several different names, geotextiles, blankets, or mats and they can be made out of various materials. Tony, is this the only type of BMP that we'd use on this type of situation? No, many different BMPs could be used, Christine, but in this location, the fiber mat is ideal. This might be a good time to discuss why vegetation would be a good BMP on a slope like this. Vegetation is the best erosion control BMP there is. Once established, it's very easy to maintain, and the roots help to hold the soil in place. Chances are, with most slopes, you'll need some type of erosion control BMP. Some of the most common erosion control BMPs are fiber rolls. Today we're looking at some other options. Just like fiber rolls, geotextiles and mats are temporary erosion control BMPs used to protect exposed slopes against erosion. Geotextiles and mats are placed directly on the soil surface to hold the soil in place and contain the moisture while promoting growth of vegetation. This fiber mat, when used with sediment controls, is a good temporary BMP for controlling erosion on steep slopes. The mats work by reducing runoff velocity. They are open-weave fiber blankets made of biodegradable materials. This is a straw fiber mat, but other biodegradable materials can also be used, including jute, coconut fibers, or mulch. So Tony, what is the fiber mat that we have here? This is jute fiber mat that differs from the straw fiber mat we saw earlier in that it's made of jute. And what is the benefit of jute? Jute is 100% natural, it's completely biodegradable, and it works very well at establishing vegetation as you can see behind us. Fiber mats should be porous enough to promote plant growth, yet shield the underlying soil. There should be no gaps under the mats, and they should be anchored correctly. When vegetation hasn't established, fiber mats must be monitored closely for wear and replaced when necessary. So this jute mat was installed at the same time as the last location. Why does this look different? Well, as you can see, Christine, the vegetation never took root in this location. And unfortunately, that's led to erosion and the mat has started to degrade. When you install these mats, it's important that you get the vegetation to take root. If you can't, then you need to either start replacing the mats regularly or you need to find a more permanent solution. Hydromulch can also be used in some applications. It consists of various types of fibrous natural materials mixed with water and sprayed onto the soil surface. It provides a layer of temporary protection against erosion. But there are some limitations to hydromulch. The area considered for hydromulch must be accessible to specialized equipment and a water source is required for mixing. When used as a temporary standalone BMP, it may need multiple applications. In addition, it must be dry for at least 24 hours before a rainfall. Now let's take a look at other installations where erosion control BMPs, like our fiber mat, are coupled with sediment control BMPs. Tony, tell us about the BMPs that we have here. 
All right, Christine, here we have a bunch of BMPs working together. It starts out with the fiber mats to control the erosion, and that's followed by fiber rolls and this rock line swale to trap some of the sediment. Finally, we have an asphalt berm, which allows the runoff to pond up and the sediment to settle out so that it can be collected later. So these sediment control BMPs look like they're working pretty well, but maybe they could be improved. Yeah, it looks like it's trapping a whole lot of the sediment, but some of it's made it out into the parking lot. Looks like we need to probably uh, do a better job maintaining and removing some of this sediment to ensure it doesn't get out into the parking lot. These BMPs require routine maintenance. Sediment trapped in the rocks or behind the berm should be removed after large rain events. So it looks like we have some of the same BMPs that we had before, but then this is new. What is this? That's right, Christine. This is an infiltration trench, and it acts very similar to the berm that we saw before. The runoff comes down and ponds behind the berm. The runoff then infiltrates into the ground through the gravel, thereby allowing the sed sediment to settle out. And then what is this right here? That's an overflow outlet for larger storm events than the trench is designed for. So why do we have sediment right here? Well, Christina, as we discussed previously, erosion control BMPs can fail, which is what's happening here, and it's allowing sediment to go downstream. Luckily, downstream of the failure, we have a sediment control BMP that's catching it. And do you think vegetation would help here? Absolutely. If we could establish vegetation in this location, it would stop a whole lot of that sediment. The use of vegetation as a BMP cannot be overemphasized, and it should never be underestimated. Vegetation is nature's finest erosion control BMP, and whenever possible, it should be established. I wanted to show this location where we have vegetation growing through the fiber mat. I also wanted to point out that the fiber mat is not only holding the soil in place, it's also retaining moisture for the growing vegetation. Here, roots are reinforcing the soil and keeping the slope in place. Sometimes vegetation must be encouraged by seeding and fertilizing after fiber mats are installed, or seed can be applied with hydromulch. Now here are a few more examples of installations using other BMP materials. So Tony, I see that we have a rock sock here. Why are we using this BMP? Uh, the rock sock's very heavy and in this location we have a good, strong, solid concrete foundation so we can use it. The runoff comes down the slope and the sediment gets trapped behind the rock sock. The runoff flows through the rock sock and down into the conveyance. And then why don't we have it on this side of the... Uh, There's no conveyance. slope on this side and so we're using nature's best BMP, that's vegetation, which grows naturally. So you wanted to show me something? Yeah, Christine, I wanted to show you this block wall installation. In a lot of areas of the county, the underlying soils don't infiltrate very well, not well enough to allow for the infiltration trench that we had seen previously. So in those locations, this is an option that could be considered. Uh, the block wall retains the gravel behind it. The gravel then filters the sediment out of the runoff that comes through, and the runoff can come out through the cracks in the wall as opposed to infiltrating into the ground. Retained materials, whether it's rock, soil, or stormwater, Everything has a tendency to move downward with gravity. The application of a retaining wall disrupts that flow. As sediment-filled rainwater collects behind the wall, heavier suspended solids drop out as the water seeps through the backfilled gravel or through the cracks of the wall. In some cases, retaining walls may actually scale the full length of the slope and act as a permanent erosion control BMP to hold the soil in place. This is ideal when vegetation is not an option. Retaining walls should be inspected at regular intervals to detect signs of structural failure. When erosion control BMPs are implemented and maintained, the amount of sediment can be dramatically reduced. Erosion control first, sediment control second. Used together, they are optimal in keeping stormwater clean and safe for our environment. If you'd like more information on BMPs, go to our website at projectcleanwater.org.